And pushing on that. Next, we need to actually move the weapon itself because as far as we haven't moved the ma- the weapon yet, so it's been still. So if I, I don't know about you, but the center of pressure that's now on the weapon is in this area here. So one of the things Blender does is it has the ability to change the pivot point. So right now, we are set to bounding box center, which means it's going to be the ultimate center of all of the object. So if I move this hand, it's moving it relative to the center that is in the middle of that triangle. But if I select all three of these and I move them, it's going to pick the general center of those three objects. Well, what we want here is to change our pivot point to a 3D cursor. And we want to put it right there at about that pressure point where all these things are moving. And what that will do is it will move these things in relation to that one specific point. Now, this hand is going to be moving freely. Don't worry about it. When we get into the coding part of getting a weapon into Arma 3, I'll show you how to make sure that the hand always stays on there with the internal coding of Arma. And for right now, we're going to just make it you know, more or less look right. So what I suggest is to move the gun forward a little bit, then up a little bit, and then you know rotate it based on that uh, that pivot point. And you want to make sure to pay attention to your first person view here. So that you have an idea of what's going on. So what's going to, so we have these two frames right here. Okay, you see where the problem is? The hand's just kind of warping to the position. Well, that's how tweening works. Tweening is when you go from keyframe to keyframe. So what we need to do is we need to make another keyframe now this is 12 frames so let's go back six one two three four five six so this is the halfway point what would the halfway point look like well if he lets go with this hand to grab the magazine and the AKs you know it's a sturdy weapon he's not gonna hold it straight up like this he's probably gonna pull it up more slowly because you know it's it's all he's only supporting it with one hand on top of that, this hand needs to come back. Oh, I'm still on pivot mode, switch back to bounding box. This hand needs to be coming back to grab the the magazine in the first place. So you see how now you see how this is a this is slightly better than what we had before. So if their first frame is him holding the grenade launcher tube the last frame is him holding the magazine and the frame in between that is him being about to go to the next one then the frame in between him holding the grenade launcher and him about to go to hold the magazine should be him letting go of the grenade launcher and the best way you can do that is to flatten the hand out a little bit is to have you know go back to 3d cursor pivot and have the weapon drop just a little bit you know not like it not like it's made out of stone or anything but just a little bit and to open up his hand to I I imply that you know he's he's let go you know you want to exaggerate things just a little bit even though that might not necessarily be what you do in real life or not pull something as hard in real life but it's satisfying to see on screen and yes, Arma is a realistic military simulator, but, or, you know, Bohemia says it is a sandbox, blah, blah, blah. But exaggerating things a little bit when it's animations instead of like it being a perfect mocap actually makes things look interesting. So we got this him letting go of the magazine, excuse me, letting go of the grenade launcher tube and letting go of the weapon. So I'm going to rotate that just to the side a little bit so it creates more of a dynamic. So. He's going to let go of it, and then he's going to lift it up, and then he's going to grab it. So that means in between here and here, there needs to be an animation of him, his hand, beginning to wrap around the magazine and him starting to put his thumb on the, uh, the magazine release.
So n another thing is the reason why I have both a dope cheat and the timeline here is so that you can easily edit your timeline. And right now our animation is no more than 20 frames. So I'm going to set end to 20 and then so we can watch the animation loop quickly. So this is more or less what you what you do. You know, you block block it out and then you block it in a little bit more and more. And then if there's issues, you want to you want to remedy those issues by going in and fixing each individual keyframe, but also fixing uh, things like, you know, deformed hands and whatnot. And again, I'm not really spending too much time in this video uh, on making sure the fingers are super correct and all the, the weight things. I'm going to give you the general idea, mainly because otherwise this video would be like five hours long. So the next thing, what, well, what's going to happen here? The next action he's going to do is he's going to pull out the magazine. But before that, there's a more important animation, and that is him re realizing that this weapon is has some weight to it, and it coming down and him resting it while starting to pull the magazine out. So we're going to go six frames in you know ahead, and we're going to take this 3D cursor. Now, a majority of the weight would be on the right-hand wrist, so we're going to put that 3D pivot there, and we're going to rotate it, and then we're going to go into the first person and adjust it just a little bit, so that when it goes up and it comes, I'm going to say comes back and down, so it comes up and down. There, it's a, uh, that's a, that's about that's about it. You know, you're not always going to have uh, need three frames in between. You know, actually, let me go and rotate this there and there. And then extend our frames forward. And I'm going to go exaggerate this by moving this up just a wee bit. So he brings it up and down. Up and down. And then in this frame, as you can see, the fingers are not on there anymore because of the rotation. But it's okay. We can go put them back. And in this frame, I want him to be pressing a little bit harder on on the magazine release. Again, the main action that was committed there was the shifting of the weight of the AK, not him releasing the magazine. And then, all right, so him pulling out the magazines, I, I'm going to say that's... That's not going to be quick, so it's going to be 12 frames away. So we're currently on 18, so that's going to be 32. Excuse me, 30, because I can math. Now here's the thing. Here's another disclaimer. The the sucky thing about Arma is that Arma doesn't allow uh, for rigged weapons like you would in other games. So if you we were doing this for Counter-Strike... Uh, the weapon would be rigged in such a way that you could actually move the magazine in the hand. Arma doesn't allow for that. Arma has this thing called a model config, which is, for all intents and purposes, an Excel spreadsheet that moves the things in the weapon. So even though we're moving, we're creating an animation for the character here, the actual things on the weapon will be animated via that model config file. So if you want to do complex things with a weapon, you need to be advised that you're going to have to figure out what those things mean mathematically. There's no way currently to do simple rigs with, uh, you know, animating software, whether you're using Blender or 3ds Max or Maya or whatever. So how? Do, so what does that mean for us when it comes to animating this weapon? Well, when you pull out an AK mag, what do you do? You you rock the magazine in and out, right? So let's say I put it at you know, 30 frame, you know, 30 degrees. I've rotated, I, I put the 3D cursor a little bit ahead of the magazine, and I rotated it 30 degrees, and I've moved it down. 